Welcome, Stefan Hartman here. Interesting video topic today, pro tennis versus carnivore bodybuilding cut. We're gonna talk about what I did to look like this on the Christmas photo shoot versus what I normally do. So, Christmas photo shoot, I had this planned and uh, the cut was basically carnivore cut. We started on Monday just eating meat. My meals were steak, pretty much. Steak and eggs, tasted great. Beef, bison, deer. Pretty basic stuff, uh, not much to it. It's not rocket science. And what I found is over the course of doing this from Monday till Saturday, I lost about six pounds. It was pretty easy. This was mostly water weight, obviously, because it went so rapidly. Um, energy was stable, felt fine. I didn't train tennis. Um, I was training intensely though in the gym. I weightlifting, was hitting that really hard every day. Uh, bridge runs in steel plate that was pretty tough felt that one uh, on christmas eve drank some red wine depletes me further dehydrates you further and so we got to the day of the photo shoot it's pretty pretty lean pretty cut up um and why did this happen well electrolytes you lose water doing a carbohydrate restriction like that you will lose water now let's look at some of the evidence for this interestingly there's no real studies out there looking at carnivore diets, fluid retention, uh, blood pressure. Uh, there's not much on that. So it's really just my case study here. But we can look at what athletes are doing and what researchers are doing for athletes um, internationally. And we can extrapolate that and apply this to the primary care setting. And we're gonna, I'm going to tie this all in and we're going to understand how we can utilize um, Carnivore cuts, low carbohydrate diets, proper electrolyte hydration, uh, not just for the athlete, for someone doing a photo shoot, but how we can extrapolate that for the general population for really practical purposes for reversing diseases. So we look at this study here, uh, the Breverage Hydration Index, probably one of the best uh, indexes out there to describe how good a beverage is at rehydrating an athlete or a person for that matter, a patient. We're finding that carbohydrate plus electrolytes plus a little bit of amino acids is probably the best way to rehydrate uh, cells in the body. This is what cells like. Um, this, we learned about this in basic biology, the dehydration um, spectrum, right? So you get hypernatremia. So this is a person who doesn't have enough water in their system they have too high salt, and so their cells, they shrivel up. Uh, so this is kind of what I was at, and this is what most bodybuilders, when you see them on stage, they look super lean like that. They're pretty dehydrated. Now, they don't do carnivore cuts. They do actually Lasix. They'll use diuretics that make them urinate out. So I didn't use diuretics. I mean, I did use a bit of alcohol, red wine. Not a lot of people think of it as a diuretic, but it sure is. It will deplete you of your water and electrolytes. Now the optimal status is fluid balance. This is where you have the proper electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Um, and then we have overhydration. This is not a good thing either. We see this in drowning victims. This is where we get too much water into the body. The cells then uh, burst and this can cause uh, rapid cell death and, and not a very good thing. But this happens to the general population too, not just in the drowning victims, right? Patients all the time are drinking a gallon of pure distilled water even, right? So there's no electrolytes in this thing. They're putting this into their body. It causes their cells to swell and it's not an optimal status. You do not want to just hydrate yourself with pure water. You need electrolytes. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about this. Um, the addition of salt to ingested fluids directly improves fluid retention. Now we hear fluid retention and we think that's a bad thing. That's not always a bad thing. You need, your cells communicate basically by firing sodium and potassium backwards and forth. That's the reason we exist, all right? Sodium is not a bad thing. We would not exist. Our cells would not be able to communicate there would be no life on earth without this simple electron gradient, these sodium potassiums moving through the cell membrane all the time, right? 
when you are training hard, you are losing electrolytes. When you live in Florida, you are losing electrolytes through sweating all the time. When you're just replenishing with water, you actually dehydrate yourself further. Studies, uh, studies have shown uh, in the athlete population that if you really want to hydrate an athlete well, you need to give them a little bit of electrolytes. Well, not a little bit. You need to give them this ratio, which is 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. This has been shown more in the uh, ICU setting. Um, you know, patients hydrated with lactate ringers is what it's called in the hospital. They do a lot better. The surgeons know this. Any surgeon you talk to will tell you lactate ringers is probably their choice for solution in the operating room because patients do better. They die less with this ratio. And this is the ratio that we have in our cells. When you measure blood work, you look pretty much for this ratio. Um, so, you optimal hydration is typically done with electrolyte solution, uh, carbohydrates, a little bit of protein. This will help you hold on to fluid well. But you saw here that I was able to manipulate my fluid status by doing carbohydrate restriction. I, I didn't do too much uh, electrolyte restriction. I, st I still uh, supplemented those. Um, and that's just because I understand how I look doing this. It's worked for me before. But I've extrapolated this for patients too, right? So low carb diets. The low carb diets, they naturally will provide a diuretic effect. You will not hold on to water as easily on a low carbohydrate diet. This is for several mechanisms. One, you'll get less of an insulin spike, but also you will not hold on to electrolytes. So if you're doing a lower carbohydrate carnivore diet, you likely will need to supplement with electrolytes. Otherwise, you'll feel kind of tired and terrible. Um, we can use these diets as an intervention to lower blood pressure. And I've seen this work clinically. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of research out there. Right? There's research on low salt diets. We find that they don't really work. They maybe increase mortality. Right? They make people feel awful. And they lower your blood pressure insignificantly by 0 0.4 millimeters of mercury. However, low salt diets continue to be recommended every day in every primary care setting. And that's because no one really knows about low carbohydrate carnivore type of diets. These are very effective in my experience in lowering blood pressure quite rapidly. We can see typically a blood pressure change, a decrease within about two weeks of doing a strict low carbohydrate or carnivore diet. It goes very fast. I see it all the time. However, there's very sparse data on this. When you look at the Cochrane reviews, meta-analysis, they mention it, but they mention it along with other diets. The you know, Mediterranean, you know, don't even get me started on what a Mediterranean diet is. You, no one can tell me. A DASH diet, I tell you this because I lived in Italy for four years, right? I know what Italians eat. It's espresso in the morning. It's a cigarette. It's another espresso, maybe a croissant. Lunch, probably an espresso again, probably another cigarette. And then dinner usually starts at about 8 p.m., and it goes on for about two hours, a seven course meal, uh, and then finished off with another espresso. That's my idea of a Mediterranean diet. This is after my experience living in Italy for four years. So yeah, I don't know where people are getting this, this, uh, this romantic idea of a Mediterranean diet. I think the reason it works for Italians is because they do this intermittent fasting. They do the snake diet. They do one meal a day and it's a big meal. The rest of the time they are in autophagy. So even though they're smoking and dehydrating themselves with espresso, they are in autophagy, which is enhanced cellular turnover. Perhaps this is more likely the reason why we think Mediterranean diets work. It's just because uh, of this prolonged fasting, which is definitely is powerful at lowering blood pressure, uh, reversing uh, diabetes, maintaining uh, weight loss. So intermittent fasting works. But all right, I, I don't go put me down the rabbit hole of Mediterranean diets and blue zones. Don't get me started on that. Uh, so what does my pro tennis diet look like? Well, it's, it's different than my photo shoot diet, right? So uh, I usually I will eat breakfast. Um, sometimes I'll intermittent fast because I'm often busy with patients in the morning. I will eat carbohydrates, though. Don't get me wrong. I do not do carnivore year-round. I don't do that. So I will eat a sourdough bread in the morning, typically. Uh, if I have liverwurst, I'm putting liverwurst on it. 
My coffee is heavy cream, collagen, and honey. Uh, sometimes if I'm very busy, I will just throw four raw eggs in some kefir and drink that. Lunch, uh, raw milk, rice, potato, simply gross sourdough. I literally like that. Dinner, probably pizza uh, or maybe some ground beef tacos. Obviously no seed oils in those. Maybe a steak. Throw a can of sardines on if uh, it's not enough protein for myself because I still try to protein leverage even though I'm still eating carbohydrates. I am protein leveraging. This means I'm eating more protein throughout the day so that I feel fuller. I have uh, enough amino acids to... Uh, induce muscle synthesis so my muscles can grow. I try to get enough protein into the day. And then also it helps me maintain an easy body composition. So um, I, I look pretty much like this year round, maybe not this cut up, but pretty close enough to this year round, just doing high intensity interval training in the form of tennis, mind you. And I'll show you what I look like on the tennis court, right? So I'm pretty explosive on the tennis court slapping the ball pretty hard. My serve goes about 120 miles an hour. So this is me performing in a tennis tournament. Typically these matches last about 10 hours. And playing against guys like this guy, you know, he's a pretty high level player that really pushes me to the max. So it's full body contraction, full muscles firing. For these tournaments, I, I'm sipping on electrolytes throughout the match. I am typically using some carbohydrate like um, honey. So I'm eating some honey during the matches. Before the matches, I will have eaten rice, uh, probably some sardines or tuna. That's usually what I eat on the road at these tournaments. Uh, but even then, you know, I'm pretty exhausted playing these long matches. Like this one in particular against Alexander, I mean, we were absolutely brutalized after two hours and 40 minutes. Him too, he actually lost the round after this against a guy much weaker than me just because he was so exhausted. Uh, but I play a very physical, <laughs> physical game. <laughs> So, you can see some of the points here. But yeah, if my point is high intensity interval training. It allows you to, in my opinion, burn fat quicker than cardio. I don't think cardio is the best mechanism for uh, maintaining a good body composition. High intensity interval training, it doesn't need to be tennis. You can mimic this through, for example, um, you know, just doing supersets, right? You can go from uh, you're doing a couple push-ups. You can then do a couple kettlebells. You know, CrossFit is uh, uh, famous for this. But even doing like a bridge run, like I did recently, right? I ran up the bridge, uh, wearing some body armor. I don't know if you guys saw that here on my on my channel. Um, this one here, I, I wore a, a, a full plate of body armor, 20 pounds, and ran up the bridge. Did some squats. This was high intensity and I was tired doing this especially walking up a bridge backwards in uh, 25 body armor very hard so high intensity interval training can be really anything you want it can be a sprint it can be a sled pull push uh, anything that gets your heart up and then allows you to break that's why tennis is the perfect high intensity interval sport is because you play a point and then you take a 30 second break collecting the ball uh, preparing for your next serve and then you go all out for, you know, typically a point less, anywhere 20, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute at the longest. I rarely, rarely do my points last about a minute. I try to at least not to make them last a minute. I don't like them to last a minute. Uh, my opponents try to make me last a minute, which I don't like. <laughs> um, but yeah, so high intensity, resistance training, and then protein leveraging doesn't necessarily need to be a carnivore diet or a low carbohydrate diet unless you know we are doing some sort of intervention to see if we can reverse the disease. But for the most part, I am incorporating carbohydrates. Um, I am doing higher protein and I'm making sure I'm hydrating with electrolytes properly throughout the day. Typically, I use the element electrolytes. I use one half of these in a mason jar and sip on these, I might go through three or four jars uh, in a, like a hot summer day, training on the tennis courts and then hitting the gym afterwards. So my physical activity is very high and when I am doing physical activity, my intensity is very high. And that's probably something that a lot of people lack is their intensity. They may go to the gym, they may go through the motions, but their intensity is not there, right? They may go do you know, cardio, cardio in general is like a walk around the neighborhood. It's very low intensity. 
right? These are good if that's the best you can do. But if you're trying to achieve that next level, that next, you know, optimal physique, you have to push yourself harder and uh, push yourself to that next intensity level. So I hope you guys like this video, understand a little bit more about my routine, what it looks like, um, and we'll catch you on the next episode.